Imagine standing on a sandy beach as warm and gentle waves lap at your feet. You feel calm and tranquil, and may even have an ice-cold drink with an umbrella you sip from. The sun blazes above you, and you gaze at an endless horizon of shimmering water, lost in thought. But then, a peculiar sensation takes hold of you. You notice that it's suddenly quiet. No birds are singing, and there are no more sounds from the groves of palm trees behind you. You glance down at the water beneath your feet and realize it's a bit further from you and receding. As it retreats, the waves grow smaller, cresting further and further from the shore. A large group of seagulls frightens you as they suddenly squawk above and hurriedly fly past. You squint, trying to confirm what your gut tells you. And then, you spot it. A dark shape emerges in the distance, slowly but surely growing larger and rising above the water like a menacing titan. A tsunami approaches, and as it does, the sound of the wave booms like a locomotive barreling down the tracks straight at you. You're gripped by fear and realize there's no escaping the giant oncoming wave. You remain frozen, mesmerized, and continue to stare as the wave approaches, growing taller and taller until it towers over you, a thousand feet tall. Then, finally, the wave crashes onto the shore with a thunderous roar, shattering everything in its path. The air is filled with the sounds of cracking wood and crumbling stone, a symphony of destruction that goes on forever. Welcome back, science fans. What you just heard was a story, but tsunamis really do exist in nature. In this video, we'll dive into the difference between tidal waves and tsunamis. Look at the three most devastating tsunamis in history, and watch a surfer as he gets the world record for riding the tallest wave. First, let's understand what a tsunami is. A tsunami is a series of ocean waves triggered by earthquakes, landslides, or volcanic eruptions. These giant waves are scary, and yes, they can grow as tall as a skyscraper. When a wave approaches shallow water near the coast, it undergoes a process called shoaling, where the wave height increases dramatically. This is because the speed of the wave slows down as it approaches the shore, while the energy remains constant. This causes the wave to pile up and get taller, sometimes reaching up to 100 feet or more. If you like this channel, please subscribe. That's the best way to get it in front of more people. What's the difference between a tsunami and a tidal wave? Tsunamis are caused by huge disturbances in the water, while tidal waves are caused by the moon's gravitational pull. Typically, tsunamis are more destructive than tidal waves and travel across oceans, while tidal waves are usually limited to specific estuaries or bays. The speed at which a tsunami approaches the shore depends on several factors, including the depth of the water, where the tsunami originates, and the coastline's geography. In the open ocean, Tsunamis can travel up to 500 miles per hour, which is about the speed of a commercial jet airliner. However, as the tsunami wave enters shallow water near the coast, its velocity slows significantly, typically to around 20-30 miles per hour. The exact speed of a tsunami can also vary depending on the wave's size and the coastline's slope. Usually bigger waves move faster, while smaller ones tend to move more slowly. So while 20 miles per hour may seem pretty slow, don't think you can outrun it for a second because that's still faster than you can run. In the history of our planet, few natural disasters can match the destructive power and terrifying scope of a tsunami. From ancient times to the present day, these massive waves have struck coastlines worldwide, leaving a trail of devastation in their wake. Although there have been many throughout history, here are the top three killer tsunamis. The Indian Ocean Tsunami, also known as the Boxing Day Tsunami, was one of the deadliest and most destructive tsunamis in recorded history. The tsunami was triggered by a massive earthquake with a magnitude over 9.0 that occurred off the coast of Indonesia on December 26, 2004. The waves from this earthquake were of varying heights depending on how far you were from the earthquake's epicenter. The average size was estimated to be around 33 feet, but some waves grew to 100 feet. Waves reached the coasts of Thailand and all the way to Sri Lanka and India. The tsunami caused the biggest death toll in recorded history, with an estimated 230,000 people killed and $15 billion in property damage. Next, the Krakatoa eruption and tsunami of 1883 was another one of the world's deadliest tsunamis. The tsunami was triggered by the eruption of the Krakatoa volcano, which occurred on August 27, 1883 in the Sunda Strait, which is close to Indonesia. 
the eruption caused massive seismic activity, which generated multiple tsunami waves that swept across the region. The waves were estimated to be up to 100 feet high and struck the coasts of Java and Sumatra. The tsunami caused widespread destruction, with an estimated 36,000 people killed and many more injured or displaced. The power of the waves was so great that they reportedly carried large ships inland and swept entire towns out to sea. The third most destructive tsunami on our list is the Tohoku earthquake and tsunami of 2011. This tsunami was triggered by a massive 9.0 magnitude earthquake that occurred off the coast of Japan on March 11, 2011. The resulting tsunami was so huge that it grew to 130 feet and traveled six miles inland when it struck the northeastern coast of Japan. It's estimated that 16,000 people died in the tsunami. In addition, the waves destroyed entire towns and cities along the coast, leaving many homeless and without access to basic necessities. The tallest tsunami ever recorded was the Latuya Bay Mega Tsunami, which occurred on July 9, 1958, in Alaska. The Mega Tsunami was triggered by an earthquake and a subsequent landslide at the bay's head. As the earth shook, it loosened about 40 million cubic yards of rock high in the mountains above the northeastern shore of Laituya Bay. The giant mass of rock plunged 3,000 feet into the waters of Gilbert Inlet, causing a massive wave to form and travel across the bay. The wave reached a mind-boggling height of approximately 1,720 feet. It was so large that when it struck the bay's far side, it stripped away all the trees and vegetation from the surrounding hillsides. Fortunately, the Latuya Bay Mega Tsunami occurred in a relatively remote area, and there weren't any casualties. After witnessing the power of tsunamis, I don't think you'll want to go anywhere near one. But for some thrill seekers, surfing these massive waves is the ultimate challenge. Tsunamis and tidal waves are unpredictable, and attempting to ride them can result in, well, you being dead at the bottom of the ocean. Yet, despite the danger, some people are still drawn to the challenge. Surfers who attempt to ride tsunamis are typically highly skilled and experienced, and they train extensively to prepare for the physical and mental demands of riding these giant waves. One of the best spots for surfing these big waves is at Praia do Norte in Nazare, Portugal. This location is famous for large wave surfing because of the area's unique geography, which creates massive waves that attract surfers from around the world. The beach faces the Atlantic Ocean and is directly in the path of powerful swells that originate thousands of miles away in the North Atlantic. These swells are funneled into a narrow canyon on the ocean floor, just off the coast, which causes the waves to grow as they approach the shore. Sebast These athletes love the water. Another famous surfer, Kai Lenny, is one of the most respected in the world and sums it up pretty well. For me, it's like the ocean is a battery pack, says Lenny. I get energy from being in the water, and when I'm not, I don't have that same spark. The light in my eye dims, maybe. I think for my soul itself, there's no better feeling than riding a wave. Tsunamis can be scary, but what is even more terrifying is waking up in the middle of the night and seeing demons. This is not science fiction and is a real phenomenon that some people swear has happened to them. Click on my next video to learn how anyone, including you, could wake up in the middle of the night paralyzed and see these nightmarish creatures.